Well, hi, good morning. Um, thank you for having us here today. Uh, my name is Nick Tama, and I lead the Camera and Sensor Architecture Group uh, at HP. And here with me is Mahesh Chaudhary. Uh, he is a fellow and a, a senior director for the MEMS Group uh, or MEMS Software Solutions Group at ST Microelectronics. And uh, we're here to talk to you about some of the key applications that TinyML has had uh, in the commercial PC business. So with that said, let's jump right into it. So as you know, um, you know, the pandemic has brought about a major shift in the way we work uh, with hybrid work styles becoming the new norm. And, um, you know, we've uh, here at HP, right, we've, uh, we recognize the importance of this and we've partnered up with SD Micro to not only leverage their technology, but also leverage their expertise in building up an AI model that recognizes specific user context for smartly managing um, uh, power uh, and uh, th thermals. Um, and these are just you know, a few examples uh, that we've, uh, or use cases that we've enabled with ST Macro's technology. Um, today, you know, our PCs uh, with the technology, we're now able to recognize when you're on the go and smartly optimizes the battery life accordingly. On the other hand, when you're you know, ready to start your PC uh, or ready to start using your PC, uh, we're able to know when you've taken out of the bag so you can wake up the PC and you can start your work faster. And last but not least, uh, we've also um, built a capability uh, to the device where it's able to recognize whether you're using the PC on the table or on a lap or you know, you're working comfortably maybe on your bed or on the couch. And we smartly uh, adjust the device temperature so that it ensures optimal comfort as you're working. And so these are just a few examples of how TinyML has been transformed in PC space. Uh, and uh, as we uh, you know, as we move, um, uh, and uh, I'll hand it over <laughs> uh, to Mahesh to talk about, to deep dive into the technology. Um, this is enabled by um, uh, our smart sensors with machine learning core in them. And uh, these smart sensors uh, have, you know, different uh, blocks built into them, which allow them to run a decision tree or a finite state machine, you know, do some signal conditioning on this data, and uh, you know, thereby achieve power efficiency. So I'll show some results um, of what we can achieve in terms of current consumption, where we are running these always-on use cases that Nick just described. So um, the decision tree, when it is implemented in the sensor itself, uh, it will allow you to do contextual awareness. Uh, these finite state machine can link different decision trees together, and uh, you know traverse through different uh, user modes. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of running all of this logic on the sensor itself is to give you extreme power efficiency. You do not need to send all the raw data to the application processor or to the cloud. You can uh, have the computation occur inside the sensor itself. So you're offloading the main processor and thereby you're improving the system efficiency. Uh, sensors have also the sensor hub functionality where the advantage is you can bring in any additional sensor data to be processed through that decision tree or a finite state machine inside the sensor. So this is truly bringing the you know, intelligence to the edge. So you know, on this particular slide, you know, I'm just listing few of the uh, features that are available within the computational block of this smart sensor. So as you can imagine, to put any algorithm together, you would need uh, some of these uh, statistical features. They are mean, variance, energy in the band, peak-to-peak -peak value, zero crossings, you know, positive zero crossing or negative zero crossings, you know, number of that occurrences. You have a peak detector. You have, uh, you know, uh, minima, maxima, all of these features. So they are all available to be computed inside the sensor. So there is, a, you know, these are sort of hardened in the sensor, thereby you achieve the power efficiency. Now, uh, what is the process? The process, I think most of you know this process fairly well, but I'll just describe this. There are two pieces to it. So the very first part is, to capture the data. So as Nick described, you, know, you have these different scenarios. You want to detect when the device is in the bag. You know, you're carrying your laptop and you're walking around with it. 
So you would want to collect data when the person is driving, walking, you know, in an escalator, on an elevator, all of those scenarios. So you capture accelerometer, gyroscope data, if you, uh, and you, know, you label this data. So next piece is labeling of this data. Uh, and then you, know, you, of course, build your decision tree logic with it. Uh, and uh, once that decision tree has been built, uh, you, know, you would embed this into the implementation. So I'll briefly describe that later during the presentation. And finally, you, know, you have this running in real time on your uh, device where sensor is doing most of the work. You do not wake up the application processor. You wake up the application processor only if there's an interrupt detecting a contextual change. So all of this is enabled by um, you know, ST's tool called as Unico. So it allows you to capture sensor data. It allows you to label the sensor data. As you can imagine, for machine learning applications, labeling of the sensor data is pretty critical. So it allows you to do that. Um, you know, designing of features and filters is also possible through Unico. So that's what we used. And uh, ultimately, building the decision tree, converting that into a solution that can be embedded into your driver is also done by Unico. So now let's talk about the uh, HP's uh, use cases. So I hand this back to uh, Nick. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so let me walk you guys through some of the HP features that we've been able to enable with ST's uh, technology. So first, I'll talk about the in about detection. This is a feature that utilizes ST's uh, IMU and machine learning core together to inference whether the PC is uh, being carried inside of a bag uh, and also being uh, taken out of the bag by the uh, unique gesture movement when you remove uh, you know, the device out of a backpack or a briefcase or so on. And so we use this inference um, to uh, smartly adjust the uh, power states. So when you're going from location A to location B, we intellig intelligently hibernate your PC so that way it maximizes the battery life of the PC uh, before you get to your final destination. Um, at the same time, we also detect the gesture movement of you picking the device out of the bag uh, so that we can wake up the system automatically and it just uh, saves you time from uh, waiting for the PC to boot up and just allows you to get into Windows a lot quicker. Uh, at the same time, the, uh, this solves a, a, a big customer pain point today where um, there are times when you know, users forget to put their system into sleep mode and they, put it, they insert it inside of the bag and then because there's not much ventilation, it starts overheating. And so that also allows us to uh, solve that uh, corner case or that pain point today. Next, we have the on-table detection. Uh, this is a feature that utilizes the same technology, IMU and, S and the machine learning core together, uh, to inference if the PC is being used on a desk or um, on a soft surface. Uh, and so this really allows us to um, smartly manage our thermos um, so if we detect that the PC is being used you know, on the couch or uh, on, on the bed, um, we um, you know, increase the fan speed and we also um, optimize the CPU uh, by throttling some of the power of the CPU uh, to cool down the PC about four or five degrees so that you can comfortably use it um, as you're working comfortably either on the couch or on the bed. And the next, uh, Mahesh will kind of <laughs> deep dive a little further more into the development process of how these use cases were enabled. So um, in this case, we jointly worked. So HP defined the use cases for in and out of bag detection you know, uh, what kinds of bags, how would person hold these things, all of those, and on table detection. So, you know, and then they provided us systems. They provided us the laptops with our sensor in it. And, you know, we defined the different scenarios, um, you know, collaboratively working with HP for, you know, real life use case scenarios, uh, how you would, um, you know, uh, want to collect this data. And we developed a specific application that would run on your um, uh, laptop, uh, which would acquire this data, label this data. We had about um, 50 plus uh, worldwide employees, so we you know, added diversity in the users. So um, 
uh, from all the you know from different continents in Asia, in North America, and in Europe. You know this data was collected by ST and HP employees. Uh, this data collection campaign you know uh, included men, women, people tall, not so tall, young, not so young. So you know big diversity of this data. Uh, and of course, also for testing, not just collecting this data. So this data was collected, um, you know, uh, appropriate labeling was done. Uh, you know, this required back and forth, uh, you know, at times where you would uh, want to clarify the data collection procedure to folks in the field, to uh, ST and HP employees in the field who are collecting this data when they try out, you know, this laptop which has the sensor in it and when you're walking around with it. Um, next, what we did was, uh, of course, the model generation. So with all of this data that's, that was collected all over the uh, globe, uh, we, you know, st again started with the Unicode tool. You know, of course, uh, it goes through the process of, um, uh, you know, features and, uh, you know, filter definition. So uh, the sensor itself allows you, as long as you can define your filter, uh, you can program the sensor with that filter setting. So if you have a transfer function, you just specify the, you know, you know numerator and denominator of the transfer function and sensor essentially will have the ability to filter out either the x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, or the norm of the acceleration, norm of the angular velocity uh, of that sensor data. And then the uh, uh, feature computational block, which I was describing earlier, you know, with all of those 17 different kinds of features. So the whole idea was that for the given motion patterns, design a decision tree, and of course test this decision tree offline before you deploy this thing. So decision tree finite state machine implementation was put together, tested uh, with the available data. Uh, once you reach a certain, you know, desired level of accuracy, that's when, you know, we started to do some field trials. And once that was done, uh, essentially we felt very confident that, okay, this, uh, the solution would work well in the field. Uh, that's where we went to the next stage, and which is to prepare drivers and help with the validation. So, uh, these laptops can have, you know, different, as you can imagine, OSS and different, uh, you know, manufacturers. So uh, the, the decision tree finite state machine logic was, uh, you know, embedded into, into the driver. Uh, the driver, essentially, you can imagine this, a header file would contain the decision tree in a finite state machine. So Unicode tool that we have allows you to take your decision tree and a finite state machine, converts that into, uh, you know, uh, register maps for the sensor and it is downloaded into the sensor every time the sensor is uh, turned on. You know, essentially whenever you turn your laptop off, it doesn't mean that the sensor is turned off, but uh, sensor is, you know, turning on and off of the sensor is managed at a different, um, you know, a stage. So prepare the driver, and the next piece was uh, validation. So we provided another tool uh, which will allow you to collect data. And imagine that, you know, you close the lid of your laptop and you're walking around, you would still want to collect the data to see how well is the solution working. So this was um, done jointly, where we shared a tool, um, and this tool allowed us to collect the you know, field test data with the application in it. Uh, in, you know, one thing to, I want to emphasize here, that you, know, you don't have to use ST's tool. You, know, you can generate your decision tree with any other tool that you want to use. Uh, it could be your MATLAB, it could be VECA, it could be any other tool that you prefer. Uh, and, you know, Unico would allow you to convert that solution into this register map that I described, which becomes part of your driver. So finally, you know, you put this together, uh, and here are the results of what you can achieve. So the solution consumes only 34 microamps of current consumption to detect in and out of back detection and on-table detection. So you can imagine you're running this solution um, here, uh, you know, all the time, you know, you have to run in and out of back de detection all the time, right? You, you cannot have this, uh, so 34 micro, uh, microamps of current consumption can essentially uh, enable these features and not affect the battery life. So sensor current consumption is uh, a number that you see here, 550 microamps of sensor con current consumption where you are turning both gyro and accelerometer on. Uh, this sensor has also an, uh, an ability to turn the gyro off when it is not needed. So the larger part of this current consumption for the sensor is for gyroscope. So if you can actively determine when to turn the gyroscope off and further achieve you know, greater energy efficiency. So if you detect that the laptop is sitting on your desk, you can turn the gyro off and thereby you know, reduce that for current consumption further down. So 
if you were to implement the same logic for in and out, in and out of bag detection and on table detection on an application processor, it'll be at least 10 times more amount of current consumption. So that's basically what we achieved. 